No, I just got hit. I just got hit. This is a nice one. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to RGC Fishing. Here in today's video, we're out here on Galveston Island doing some flounder fishing. And uh, man, it's been an eventful day. So we're already at spot number three. Uh, one and two, we didn't even get to fish because we have just had these crazy bull tides here recently. Um, if you guys have been fishing or have you seen the past couple videos, it's just been really tough. Everything's super flooded. So we retreated to Pelican Bridge, very well-known flounder spot. I'm not too sure how it's gonna be out here. I do think it's still a little too warm for the flounder to be like stacked up how they would be on the run. And of course, our first cold front isn't until like November 1st, uh, October 31st, which is when they close down flounder season for us here in Texas. So I don't know, it's a, a little bit of a poor luck, but we're gonna give it our best effort here, try and get on some flounder, show you guys what rig we're working with and let's get into some fishing. Rig of choice today is going to be the tandem rig. These are super easy to tie if I get snagged out here, which is definitely easy to do while flounder fishing. I'll show you all how we tie this up, but super simple. We got 15 pound fluorocarbon here. Take a little bit, double it over, tie off like four, four or five inches. And we've got our first one eighth ounce jig head. Got that rigged up with the pink, hot pink gulp swimming mullet. Definitely the number one, number one flounder fishing lure. If you can't find these because it does get tough around this time of year when people are flounder fishing i would say mantis shrimp is a hard second then we got another little bit of line there and that goes off to our second one eighth ounce jig head for jig heads i am using crappie style hooks you can find those in like freshwater section of your sporting goods store and the reason we use those is because like i said you are always 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 going to be running the risk of getting snagged while you're flounder fishing you cast it out you let it sink to the very bottom and then you just drag it across the bottom. And there's always structure, there's always opportunity to be snagged. So with those crappie, really thin wire hooks, you can kind of just bend them out and get your hook back, bend it back into place and keep fishing instead of losing all of your tackle. Saw that pro tip on TikTok. I've been doing it ever since. Oh. But yeah, like I said, we just let it sink. And it's not too deep over here, so it gets down pretty fast with both of those weights. And then very slightly, drag your lures across the bottom, reel back in for slack, drag your lure across the bottom, and we just repeat that process. So what I'm gonna do is this spot got a lot of area to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and set like a 15 minute timer, kind of fan cast one spot, move down a little bit, maybe give it an hour, two hours here and see if we can get lucky, man. I don't, my expectations aren't too high. This is plan C. I really wanted to do some bull red fishing today, but gosh, just looking at that tide, looking at all the spots, it was just really, it's rough. It's been rough conditions. So this is what we got to work with, man. I hope we can make it happen. There we go. Oh yeah, guys. Nice. Definitely not a keeper, but that is the target species of the day. It's been within the first 30 minutes of fishing and we're on one. Check it out. So hopefully this guy did not choke it. Definitely not a keeper, but it's good to see they're here, man. I was getting a little worried that, you know, it might be too hot for flounder fishing. 
um, talking with all my buddies. You guys know, you've probably seen other videos here in the area. Flounder fishing has been mighty, mighty slow. Oh, please don't tell me you choked it, pal. Is he still, he's currently trying to choke it, dude. Stop it. Stop that, would you? Open up that mouth for me. Oh no, he didn't choke it, perfect. Got the hook out of him without doing too much damage. Let's go ahead, get him off the grips. Get this boy back in the water. That's number one on the day. Yeah, pleasantly surprised. I had pretty low expectations for the spot, like I said. And we got on a decent one. Oh, I just got hit. I just got hit. Did you? Nice. This is a nice one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably another about 10 inches. Come here, buddy. Measure him just to, oh. I mean, he's 10 inches for sure. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be worthy of uh, the measure board. All right, y'all, that is number two. It hasn't even been our first hour of fishing yet. This guy made it a lot easier on me as well. He's not choking it as nearly as much as the last one did. All right, so yeah, probably about 10 inches right there, but number two on our targeted species. I'm happy, man. We're doing pretty, we're doing pretty all right. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm happy to see the target species. I wish we could get at least just one keeper. That's all I would really like. We could do a cook before they close the flounder season. I didn't feel a bite, but I'm dragging something. Oh yeah, he's got it. Another little potato skin. Oh, that little turd. This little idiot, he shook my gulp. That, look at how I That's smaller. Guy. Yeah, I know, but look at the hook set. Yeah, I know, It's barely. just on the barely little tip of the lip. Just That's to good spite though. you. Yeah, so one thing I do want to mention, and I'll talk about it more here in the um, next segment of the video. Really want to do our best not to let these guys, so I know you always hear people say, let them eat it, let them eat it. And to be honest, I let them eat it a little bit there. But it's very important to take care of our small undersized flounder. Um, for various reasons that I'll talk about after uh, I get re-rigged here. Well guys, I was in the middle of talking about what I wanted to talk about. Then the... Oh, geez. I'm just gonna have to go cut this real quick. <clears throat> so basically, we recently fished the Galveston A&M Fishing Pier. Um, if you guys haven't seen that video, go check it out. We had a great night. Caught a ton of freaking bullreds. But while we were doing that, our buddy who goes to Texas A&M, the one who got us on the on the pier itself come to find out he's actually getting his phd right now and i'm not sure exactly what maybe if you're watching this daniel you can let us know down in the comments but uh it's something to do with fish and he's studying flounder right now so i thought that was really cool we got to kind of pick his brain and talk about flounder and one of the big issues and the reason why they keep closing the season for us and um you know making them the limit like a lot not a lot bigger but it used to be 14 inches now it's 15 inches they reduce the amount of fish you can keep and there's a, a reason behind that so texas parks and wildlife they will get fish to spawn in tanks right redfish they can get to spawn in tanks speckled trout they can get them to spawn in tanks but flounder for whatever reason will only spawn in the wild and they won't just naturally do it so texas parks and wildlife can't release the little fingerlings to go out and kind of artificially help the natural fish stocks that we have and with through research and stuff he was letting us know that you know flounder no matter what they do our numbers are just going down the population of flounder is just going down 
um, even with the decrease in limit, the decrease in the keeper size or increase in the keeper size, and with the closure of flounder fishing these last couple years, it's not helping. So they're trying their best to research and figure out what's going on with these flounder. And to me, after hearing that, it's like I want to be extra careful with the undersized flounder that we do catch so we can just hopefully let those guys re get released and grow up to become keepers and uh, ultimately try and help out the flounder because they're struggling. They're struggling here in Texas, man. Oh, that's a flounder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Another undersized here. Man, all these guys are undersized. Let's hurry up and get them. Oh, man. Looks like he's bleeding. Try and hurry up here. I'm gonna try and get a closer look, but it's looking like we're just gonna have to clip it. That is gonna be the best option for these fish. If you are gonna just really jack them up, trying to get your hook out, clip it as close as you can to that hook. And, you know, hopefully they pass it or it rusts out. All right, y'all, had to clip the line on that guy. Swam off good. Um, it was really close, man. I don't even think we had him gut hooked. But on such a small flounder like that, I didn't really want to pull the, the lure through his gills and clip it like that. We just got to hope that hook rusts out. Like I said, that is a, pretty much the best thing you can do. And at least we saw that guy swim off strong. And now we have an excuse to tie up another tandem rig so I can show you guys how we're going to do that really quickly. Alrighty y'all, tying this rig is pretty simple. All we're gonna need is our leader line here, 15 pound test, fluorocarbon. Got those Mr. Crappie jig heads. And then your bait of choice, like I said, man, those swimming mullets are just elite. That is number one. It's the best you're gonna get. Maybe throw some mantis shrimp, but yeah, I don't know. I swear by these, that's, that's literally almost every single flounder I've ever caught has been off of those. So what we're gonna do is take a small section here and we're gonna attach that to our main line. I like to use a uni to uni. So right there we get our uni to uni, and then I like to take a little portion of line just to have as kind of like, you know, actual leader line. This part is where we're gonna pull off about, you know, a couple inches worth to have our tandem set up. So it's a little too long. Even that seems a little too long, bring it in. And so this is what we've got. We got this portion, and then you double over your line right here. However long you make it is about how long you're gonna have it, a piece coming off for your first jig head. So take overhand knot, I do one, and then I do two overhands to really cinch that down so this doesn't get pulled out of place. Just kind of seat that right up on that first overhand that we did. Okay, so that's what we've got so far, uni to uni little bit of line and then our last portion here I like to pull off a couple inches you can see like so and then we'll snip that and tie on our last jig head so for this first portion where we're attaching the top jig head you've got this doubled over line and this is why it's important to use kind of smaller pound test because the thicker you get it the harder it is gonna be to get this line through the eye of that hook and even with the 15 pound test, it can be a little tough. I kind of like to pinch down my leader line just a little bit to kind of get it crimped. And what you do is you take that doubled over portion, you're gonna feed it through, and even now it's still a little too thick for me. Come on. There we go, we got it through. And now all we're gonna do is take and kind of loop it through that with our jig head, like so, and just cinch her down. It's super simple super easy way to attach your hook so that's our first jig head on 
And for the last one, you're just gonna tie it how you normally would, either a loop knot or what I'm gonna do, a little trialing. We'll grab ourselves two gulps. And there you have it, a super simple and effective tandem rig. I will say you can buy these like pre-made, but there's two, two notes that I have about that and why it's just better to tie your own. It's really not that tough to do. And when you consider the cost of those pre-mades that you're gonna buy at the stores and stuff, uh, they're really expensive and you lose a lot of, a lot of tackle while flounder fishing. So if you're prepared to come out and maybe go through, you know, two or three of those pre-made rigs, then by all means, go ahead and do it. But also I'd like to note that those pre-mades are usually done with saltwater like rated jig heads and you can honestly run those numbers up. So if you would have lost two or three just a random crap uh, with saltwater jig heads, if you get snagged, good luck trying to bend out those hooks. Uh, with this, you just have a lot more control. You can use the thinner hooks that are easier to bend out and it also saves you more on kind of like losing tackle and stuff. All right guys, that is gonna do it here for today's video. Uh, it was a ton of fun out there. I did continue fishing after re-rigging and brought in a bunch more of those dinks. It's kind of funny to me. It's like the exact opposite of how fishing from the kayaks has been going when we're targeting flounder. If y'all saw the last video, it just went completely wrong. Um, fished all day long and between me and my pops, there was one flounder caught, but it was like a super nice 18 inch flounder keeper. And then on our previous trip before that, it was the same, same deal where there was like one or two bites all day and it was a 22 inch, really nice keeper flounder. It's just funny to me, you'll grind all day, get one keeper versus going out for like a couple hours on a Hail Mary trip and absolutely just killing it on the dinks. <clears throat> but I didn't get one keeper. I'm not gonna complain. I'd much rather go out and be catching fish versus grinding all day long. It's, it just makes it easier for me. You know, I had fun. I got to show off the flounder fishing tactics, present you guys with some catches, and I just had fun. It was, it's nice. It's always nice getting your target species. <clears throat> but yeah, y'all, that's going to do it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button for me. Hit the subscribe button so you can see more fishing content like this. I'm going to be doing all different types of fishing. Kayaks, jetties, random rocks, wade fishing, a lot of different stuff. I'm not really sure what we're going to do next probably continue going after a keeper flounder. I would like to do one catch and cook before November 1st, but more than likely it's gonna be bull red fishing. That stuff has been super hot lately, so make sure you have notifications turned on so you can see what we're doing next, and I hope y'all have a great rest of y'all's day. Peace.